Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Feed and Smoke, written by John Jeremiah Sullivan. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, in this work by John Jeremiah Sullivan, uh, we get an account of his brother Ellsworth being electrocuted. His brother Ellsworth was... Um, a musician and he was about to sing in his garage and he's practicing for like a concert and he just gets electrocuted and he pretty much almost dies um you know medical personnel come in they use the paddles they shock him and they try to get his heart back into rhythm and ellsworth is rushed to the hospital and john jeremiah sullivan and the rest of the family they get alerted to you know what just happened the accident that just happened and pretty much the entire short story kind of focuses after the, um, Ellsworth being shocked. The rest of the short story pretty much focuses on um, the recovery, and it's very tough. The the recovery is very tough for the family because when you go through something like that, um, the the person at the hospital, Ellsworth, they, they call him Worth for short in the hospital. He's like basically hooked up to a bunch of wires, a bunch of machines, and they're just trying to keep him alive. And the way that John Jeremiah Sullivan describes how his brother is hooked to different machines and things like that, it's very, it shows you how much the human race have gone in terms of um, advancing medically, but at the same time, it shows you how fragile life is because the brother is hooked to so many machines, machines that are moving his blood, machines that are helping him breathe, machines that are keeping his heart um, beating. Um, and it's kind of like his life is held at, at just an inch. And at any time he could die or at any time he could survive. Um, eventually, you know, the, the family's crying, the family is remembering uh, the good times they had with him. And, and it's kind of like the same thing that you get with funerals. Um, when somebody dies, you know, we, you know, it's kind of like a morbid thing that the human race does. When somebody dies, you take the dead body after they're, they're dead. You take the body. It's dead. It's, it's, it's just, you know, it's a corpse. Uh, we clean it up. We wash it. If it was where, you know, we, we put new clothes on it. We usually, if it's a guy, you put a suit on the corpse. Or if it's a woman, you put a nice dress on the corpse. Um, you do its hair. Um, you trim its, like if, it, if the man has a beard, if a corpse have a, has a beard, uh, we trim everything. We make the corpse look nice and pretty. Uh, and then we find a nice casket, a nice box um, that's, you know, top of the line, that's clean. You know, usually in the United States, uh, um, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, I think like funerals, um, the cheapest funerals, like six to eight thousand dollars. That's that's just off the top of my head. I think that's how much funerals cost. And, um, you know, we 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 invite all our friends or all the person's friends. They all come to the ceremony. And the corpse is dressed up really nice like a doll. And we put that person, that corpse into a box. And then we cry and sing and say the good memories. And kind of like, it kind of, it's kind of like a morbid thing when you think about funerals. When you take a dead body and you dress it up and you parade it for everybody to cry. It's kind of like you take a doll and put it in a box and put it in mint condition. It's like a mint condition doll and then you bury it. Um, that's just something about funerals that's kind of morbid that the human race does the same way that you know the whole thing with funerals that i'm describing it's kind of, it kind of relates to this short story because the same way that you would mourn a person's corpse is the same way that um ellsworth's family in the short story kind of like they're sad they cry they they think about the good times they had and then they're just kind of like rejoicing for who he was although he he doesn't die in the short story he, he recovers by the end of the short story um he just has he forgets what happens in throughout the course of a month that he was in the hospital because his brain pretty much has to had to uh, like rebuild everything or remember who he was and it was pretty much there's a point in, in in the hospital where he was kind of like a toddler grasping onto little memories here and there trying to figure out who he is who he was and that build up is very interesting because it's it's kind of like yes he almost died but he comes back with a, a new way or a new attitude or a new personality towards life and his family they're sad that he's not the same but he builds back to who he is and, and it's just like kind of like a piece of his life where he gets electrocuted that he forgets about 
but for me, while I was reading the short story, I kind of really looked at that um, that idea of how you know the human race or anywhere we go around the world, whenever somebody dies, we take a corpse, we dress it up, we think about all the good times, and you know you put you put a human body in a suit or a dress, and and you put it in mint condition and then you bury it. It's kind of like yes, everybody gets closure for that for that dead human being, but at the same time, it's one of the most creepiest things that like that our cultures around the world do. Um, so by the end of the short story, Ellsworth is fine. Um, he goes back home. He he goes back to his life. The family, you know, it was a tough time for them, but they all get through it. Um, and that's pretty much the short story. The the one the, the thing that's very important about this, the thing that's very significant about this, is how um, John Jeremiah Sullivan talks about his family and talks about what they went through and talks about the accident and and goes back in the past and show us his childhood with his um, older brother. Um, and it's very significant. It's very heartwarming in terms of analysis. And uh, what's really significant about this is kind of like how. Uh, when Ellsworth is trying to remember himself or who he was again, he thinks about the, the sticks and that goes to Greek mythology. Um, and he kind of remembers what he learned in high school in his um, Greek class or, or just ancient religions class. And he thinks he thinks that he was at the um, Styx River, which we know that's kind of like, you know, between being on Earth and being on, in the underworld. And um, he could have crossed over to the side of the living or to the side of the dead. He comes back to the living, but it was like kind of like a, a horrific or a challenging experience for Ellsworth. And he doesn't remember that one month of his life when, you know, he was shocked in, in the hospital. Um, and that kind of begs the question about religion. It's kind of like whenever somebody dies, whenever we think about dying, we always think about religion or what else exists in the world. I think the human race, one thing that's significant about this and one thing that kind of illustrates this in this short story is kind of like how we try to understand everything, you know, human beings from our scientists, from our teachers, from our, um, you know, institutions of education, we try to understand the universe, the world, everything around us. The one thing that human beings can't understand, the one thing that we struggle with, the one thing that we can't get over is the fact that, you know, we all have a due date. And, and what I mean by that is we all have to go one day, we all have to cross that line, and there's going to be a time where we just don't exist anymore. And that's something that we all struggle with. And I think the family reflects on this throughout the short story, and even Ellsworth reflects on this because he even mentions the Styx River. Um... So it's kind of like that unknown, that uncertainty that, you know, we try to define it and we try to find meaning and, and try to see what's going to happen next after we pass away. But we just there's no there's no amount of science that can tell us what's next. And that level of uncertainty, that level of not knowing, it's something that we all deal with. And um, I guess seeing the people reflect on death and kind of like look to the past to understand who they might be losing in the short story, but not knowing where he's going or um, Ellsworth himself not knowing where he's going. It's something that kind of like brings you back. And, it, and, and, and I mean, there's a lot of things out. There's a lot of books out there that talk about death and, and um, our mortality. But the way that Ellsworth goes through it and comes back from it, it it's just... It's fascinating and it's that's you know something that humankind might you know we will never completely understand the other thing that was significant about the story is when um ellsworth gets electrocuted and then we they use paddles to bring him back so electricity almost killed him and electricity built, brings him back to life and that's quite significant because when you think about it it's like human beings we can't be either or we can't be you know, there has to be a specific set of balance. So his ha his heart has to beat at a certain rate for him to, to be alive. His blood has to move at a certain rate. So there's no up or down. There has to be specific balance for human beings to exist. Um, and that balance is just, it's just fascinating because the same thing that killed them is the same thing that saved them. Um, so in my perspective, that was very significant. So that's all I have to say about Feed and Smoke. Uh, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment, and I'll see you guys in my next video.